Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. And in this video, I wanna show you how you can integrate maps into your Ruby on Rails project. And this is gonna be completely free. We're not gonna use the Google Maps API. So if you've ever had some sort of model that you wanted to display the location of it, let's say you were building like an Airbnb app where you have different houses and you just wanted to show the location on the map so that people would know where they're gonna be staying, like what part of town it's in. This is perfect for that. And I'm gonna show you exactly how easy this is to use and the libraries that we're gonna be using. So first of all, let's generate a brand new Rails app. So I'm gonna go into the console and let's generate an app. So I'm gonna do this by typing Rails new, and then I'm gonna call this places demo. And I'm going to use Tailwind as a CSS framework because that's what I always use for styling but you can use whatever CSS you want, or you could just leave this out to use plain CSS. All right, so now I'm gonna press enter to generate this empty uh, Rails project that we can use for this app. All right, so now that this has finally finished generating, I'm gonna CD into our places demo, and I'm just gonna get started by generating a scaffold, and I'm gonna use the place as the model for this, and let's just give this a name, and then we'll give it a location. These can both be strings. And then for storing the coordinates, so you're gonna need to store the X and Y coordinates for displaying the location on a map. So let's just put this in now, just for simplicity. We do X, this will be type decimal. Cause if you've ever looked at coordinates, you know that it's not just a whole number, it's gonna have a bunch of decimal, decimal points and it can also be negative. So we're gonna do an X and a Y uh, attribute, which are both decimals. And that should be fine for now. So let's generate the scaffold. Let's do a Rails DB migrate to migrate the database. And we now have the places model in our app. And then I'm gonna open this up in a code editor, which I'm using BS code. And then let's go over and set the root of the app. So let's go to config rutsrb And I'm gonna set the root to places index. All right, and just like that, we can test this out by starting the server with bin slash dev. And then let's go over to our browser and load up the app by going to localhost colon 3000 and we'll see this simple setup for places and we can go ahead and create a new place now we're we're not going to want to set the x and y through the form but we can go ahead and set the name so let's say we want to displace some place on the map you can probably think of some place how about um <laughs> We can do, now I have to get creative and think of a place. What's a cool place that we could do use for an example? Well, um, let's just go with New York City. Everybody knows where New York City is. Say New York City, that's the name of it. And then the location is also New York City. And then let's say the place is like Statue of Liberty. So this doesn't really matter. So if I press enter, what we're going to use for creating, for getting the location is just going to be the location field. So we're not really going to care about the name that much. That's just an internal thing for showing what the place is, I guess. So now I'm going to go over to the app views places show page, and I'm just going to do a little bit of changes here. So I'm not going to render the attributes. Like I'm not going to render the place uh, right now. And then for the H1, let's just put in the name. So I'm going to do place.name. And then I'm going to put a little bit of space for where we're going to put the map. That's the main point of this video is just how can we display a location on the map and get this to happen automatically. So I'm going to have a placeholder for now. So I'm going to give this 50 view height. And then let's just make it green so we know that it's actually showing up. So boom, right there, green place. That's where we're going to put the map. And then let's go ahead and give this an ID of map. And all right, now let's just go right into getting this all set up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add leaflet.js, which is a super awesome open source map library, which works so well. I really love this. And it's super easy to add to a Rails app. So all we have to do is let's go to the get started page. And we're gonna to need to include the CSS and the JavaScript into our app. So we're gonna put this in the head. So let's go over to views, layouts, application, or we could try to dynamically load it. 
since we're only going to show the map on the show page, we could just try to do like content for head and then pass in the attributes that we're going to use. So we're going to pass in the CSS and the JavaScript. So let's go ahead and grab the JavaScript as well. Drop this in. All right, so we should have that set up. Now we would technically be able to generate our map. So I'm gonna copy this, which is going to initiate the map. And it's also gonna add a cool marker, uh, which is always fun. And what we'll do is I'm gonna generate a stimulus controller. So let's go to the console and I'm gonna do real G stimulus. And I'm gonna call this the map controller. And then we could just restart the server and come back in here. I'm gonna uh, hook up this controller real quick. So let's add a data controller, set this to map. And then let's go over to the app JavaScript controllers. And you'll notice we have this map controller.js. And inside of the connect method, that's where we're going to initiate the map. So let's go ahead and do this right here. So we're going to have this map instead of using var, because that's kind of outdated. Let's do let, or we can, uh, in stimulus, it's kind of common to use this because we are on a class. So we can just use a class variable and say this.map. Just make sure that you update the places to use this.map as well. All right. And let's reload. And right away, you'll see that we have this map popping up, which is pretty awesome already. So now to hook up the real location. I mean, already, this is amazing, right? That you have a map in like 30 seconds, we were able to generate the map. But now if we could just get the X and Y for a location, we could put this all together. And oh, another thing I just noticed is that it looks like it didn't load this time. And if we go in the console, it says L is not defined. So I think what's happening is because we're loading this in the head, uh, there's some sort of weird glitch there. You could try to just load it on the page. That might work better. I mean, yeah, it still works. So that's probably not a bad idea. And it, as you can see, if we navigate back, it does work. So that's probably the way to do it. We could also load it at the bottom. I've, I know that's kind of a technique web developers have been doing for a long time, but it means uh, this will be the last thing to load, which means this stuff will already show up first, which will make the initial page load a little bit more fast. So let's go ahead and stick it at the bottom and everything still works perfectly. So yeah, let's go with that approach. Now we just need to get the coordinates and getting the coordinates is so easy, guys. I just learned this, which I kind of knew about it before, but there's a geocoder gem, which by default uses, I guess, open street maps, which is totally open source. I always thought that you needed Google maps. Maybe at one point you did, but now you don't. All you need is this one line and it's going to grab the coordinates for any location that you pass in. So let's go ahead and add this gem first. So we'll go to the gem file and we'll do a gem geocoder. You could also just say bundle add geocoder in the terminal and that would work as well. And now we just have to set these coordinates. So what we'll do is we can go to the controllers in the places controller. And right after we create a new place, we can set the coordinates. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a job for this. We could do it in the background so it doesn't actually uh, you know, stop the request or just in case this takes a while to do what it has to do. So let's do rails G job and we'll all call this place coordinates job. And let's generate this. And then we can go ahead and run this right after we save the place. So we can say place coordinates job perform later and we'll pass in the app place.id. And then we can go over to the app jobs place coordinates job and i'm going to pass in place id then we can pull up the place by doing place equals place finds place id and then we can drop in our geocoder code where we're going to pass in the location but just in case there's no location let's return if not place.location.present uh, so let's just return early otherwise we're going to try to get these results by passing in place.location and then we can check if there's any results. So if results are any, we're going to grab these coordinates and we can just set some variables. So say X equals the coordinates zero, Y equals one. And then we'll go ahead and we'll update the place. So we can say place.update X is X, Y is Y. And boom, just like that, we have set the coordinates for this place. 
And yeah, everything should work nicely. We can also do this after we update. If we want to check if the location has changed, we can go before we update it. We can say old location equals at place.location. Then after we update it, we can check if there was a difference. We can run the job again. So we'll check if old location is not equal to at place.location. And that will handle re-getting re the coordinates if the location has changed. All right, and now let's go back and test this all out. So we still are not showing uh, New York City. So let's go and edit this. And I'll say New York. Let's update place. And that should actually spin up the job. As you can see, if we look in the terminal, it has updated the coordinates. And if we reload, well, it's not working yet because we need to now pass the coordinates into our map controller because in the map controller, we're just hard coding this to this one X and Y. So let's pass in the values. So first, I'll define some values up here. I'll say static values equals I'll do X is a number and Y is also a number. And then we can just pass these in, although we might want to have a fallback just in case. So what we can do is we can say let X, let Y, and then we can check if this dot X, actually let's set these to X value and so y value but then we'll check inside of this check if this x value is equal to zero and this y value equal to zero because that's what happens is it'll default to zero if you didn't pass in any values and then that'll mess up the map so in that case we can just redefine x and y to these defaults so let's do this Make sure I get all the numbers. And then we'll just replace these with X and Y variables that we're using. And let's do the same thing right down here. Boom. And then finally, we have to pass in the attributes into our div with the map controller. So let's do data map X value equals at place dot X. And then the same thing for the y. So let's say data map y value equals at place a y. And that should handle displaying our location. As you can see, now we have New York City showing up here. Now let's try it with a new place by doing new place. And let's do like somewhere in Texas. We can say Austin, Texas. And then we can go ahead and create the place. Now, it looks like there was some sort of glitch here because it's not showing the default. Again, it's saying L is not defined. Why is L not defined? So maybe it is because we we should probably put this before the content just because then when we load up the map, it might happen before we load the scripts. I don't know. But as you can see, you can easily display locations. And if you wanted to get in more detail, uh, this will already work. So we're just putting the city right now, but if you put an exact address, like let's say a pizza store in Austin, Texas, let's find one, this one. And if we just grab their location somehow, see it's up here. If I come back in here and do like pizza, drop in the whole location, create place. Oh, again, we're getting this weird glitch, but, Oh, that's interesting. It looked like it, it actually didn't get the coordinates. Hmm, interesting. Maybe it was too specific of an address. Yeah, I don't see the coordinates getting set. That's fine. Let's try another pizza place. Also, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I would think that it would find it. Usually it does work. Let's try to do a new place. Pizza two, drop in the new location, create place. Oh, now look, it's setting the X and Y coordinates. So it looks like this time it did work. And boom, it's right up here in North Austin. You know what I'm gonna do is let's drop our map code into the layout 
So let's go to the layouts application, just drop it in the head. And I think that will fix that error, like when it doesn't load. And I think it's something with just doing it in line that can have that glitch with turbo. But if you keep it in the head, it's always going to show up. Like now it seems to be working. Let's try again with another place. So let's do airport. That's an easy one. So let me try to get this address of the airport right here. This Austin airport. And I'm going to drop in the location, create place. So by default, it's going to be, you know, loading up that London one. But if we reload airport, another thing we could probably do is uh, set up some broadcasting so we can update the map. That would be kind of cool. So let's go back to this page and let's do a turbo stream from that place. And then we can put the map inside of a partial. So we'll just render map and we'll pass in place at place. That's a pretty easy way to do it. And then we'll create a new file called underscore map .html .erb. inside the places folder, just drop it in. And then let's update these uh, place variables to use the regular variable instead of instance variable. I guess they call it the local variable. And if we reload, it's still there. Now let's see if we can get those turbo streams going. So if we go back to the background job, place coordinates, um, we could broadcast from here. So after we update, we could say place.broadcast, update to, pass in place, target is map. And I think we actually, instead of an update, we want to replace because we're targeting the element itself and we're going to want to replace it instead of updating the content inside of it. And then the partial is going to be places slash map and the locals is going to be place, place. So just like that, we're going to broadcast our new place over and that should work. That's yeah, funny. Let's try to use a new place here. How about this hotel right here? Hotel in Austin. Let's drop it the location. And let's see if it broadcasts. Come on. Might not have found the location. Reload. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't look like it found that location. So that's one thing. Uh, it's possible that maybe this address is newer than the open source map data. I don't know. Austin's like a one of those cities that's rapidly expanding. But we could try to go back to New York. Let's try to find something in New York. Broadway Street. Muji Soho. I don't know what that is, but let's grab the address. I'm sure that's on here. Let's say like cool store, drop in location, create place. Boom, you saw that broadcast? That was pretty clean. So once it gets ready, it's gonna broadcast the location. And as you can see, that's an exact match. So that's pretty insane. Yeah, this was way easier than I thought to add maps into a Rails app, honestly.